I love my Airstream and I love my Starlink. One question I see asked a lot is how do I get Starlink inside my Airstream? I found the answer. It's not as tough as you might think. For a long time I just kept my Starlink router in a tote underneath the Airstream, mounted the dish either on the flagpole mount up front or the flagpole mount in the back. I'm currently using a flagpole mount mounted to the rear hitch on my Airstream. I'm using the Harbor Freight flagpole. Works out pretty well. I know a lot of people deal with the issue of well, where do I drill a hole to mount the pass-through for my starting to get it into my RV. Well, you don't have to. Let me show you what I found. I had been looking for a way to bring it inside for, for quite some time, well, since I got the Starlink. And I, I really didn't want to drill a hole. I knew that there was a way to get inside the Airstream coming through the coax line where the satellite and the cable come in. I even tried hooking up a Ethernet to coax adapter to leave the router in the box outside, run it inside, it just didn't work. So when we had to replace the mixing valve and the water heater, I found out just how easy it is to bring the connection in through the side of the trailer, through the existing cable and satellite connector. All you have to do <laughs> is take your dinette apart to get to it. Um, I won't show that here, but if you go back and look at our issue of having no hot water in the Airstream, you'll see that we had to tear the dinette out to get into the mixing valve. I, I found the coax connections down in here. And I figured, hey, why can't I run the cable right through there? I've read a lot about people who have um, split their cable. And by that I mean they cut their Starlink cable and put Cat 6 ends on it so that they could reconnect it again and put it through a wall that way. So I figured why can't I use that existing cable and satellite port to bring in my Starlink connection. So I took it all apart and did it. I actually used a wall, a, a wall plate cover and cut a new hole to fit inside of the existing connector. I then just drilled a hole big enough for my Cat6 connector to go through and still drilled a couple more holes so I still have my cable and satellite connectors in there as well. So here is the finished product. When I set out designing this, I was just going to have the Starlink connection in the middle and not have any cable or satellite connections because I don't use them. I just watch things over the air, but I thought, you know what, there's room on there. Why not put them on and maybe the next guy can use them. So I fed my Cat6 cable underneath the water heater housing off to the side where the two where the cable and satellite connection come in and I will just connect my newly made entertainment connection center up to that. Connected, it looks a little something like that. And you can see it comes in right under there. Cable, so we will mount This onto that box somewhere. One of the last steps for the Starlink modification is to prepare the Starlink cable that came with the Starlink system. And this is, is going to be a little bit scary because we're going to cut the cable. And it's not like, hey, we're going with internet TV, we cut cable. This is the cable that came with Starlink. It is a proprietary end, meaning. Elon Musk was up at 3 in the morning saying what can I do to make this so it won't work anywhere else and he did so we're going to cut it a few feet back from the plug that goes into the router and then we will put cat six ends on it so that we can make that plug through the Airstream wall 
So we're going to need to cut this, strip back the shielding, untwist the wires, put on one of these on each end that because we've cut it. And then we will connect them with this pass-through, which is also shielded. Keep everything shielded so that you're not getting any electrical interference. All right, let's cut. I'm going to cut farther than I need, just in case things go horribly wrong on the first splice. But I'm about, oh, what is that, three, four feet maybe, where I'm going to put the end. Handy dandy cable scissors. Are you ready? I'm not. I'm not ready at all. And no more starting. No! <laughs> oh, I'm glad she loves the starting. Cabling looks like that. So I have, this tool will help me cut around just the outside of the cable without going through anything inside. That's my thick cable, I'm just saying. So, see that pulls off nice and neat, leaves the shielding intact. Nothing but net, or plastic in this case. And we want to grab this. This is the shielding that's around it. Do, 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 do. And we're just going to peel that back because that will be part of what we're going to crimp. It'll all make sense. Well, mostly later. The wire's going to go on top as well. Now, unwrap this plastic like it's a brand new cable or something. Alright, we will cut this off because we do not need it. to undo these wires and straighten them out so that we can put them in the ends. Now even though Elon decided to make the ends something unusual, the wires inside are just regular Cat6 cable. So we will just untwist them and straighten them out. Like so. There are two different standards that you could use for wiring this. You can use the 568A or 568B. It just that's the order that the the wiring is going to go into the cable end. It doesn't matter which you use, as long as you use the same on both ends of the cable. So, for this, we're going to do 568B because that's the one I'm more familiar with. So, with the flat part, not the connecting part, but the flat part on top. So it will go in like that. You're going to sort these out using orange, white, orange. Some people will call it white, orange, but it's the same thing. It's easier for me to remember. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue. Let's get the green, white over there. Green, white, blue. blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. 
so you get those all in order straightened out because you have to try to put them in the end of this which is just just all kinds of fun a hint the warmer these cables are the more pliable they will be um, it's a little chilly because it's still winter here not that I'm mad so with the, and the crimping tool give it a good squeeze and your ends are all nice and tight squeezed together everything's good squeezed sure then we'll just cut those wires off remove the excess shielding around there and do the same thing for the other end of the cable eventually I'm here in Bakersfield California at a beautiful RV park and I finally get to test out my Starlink hack a Starlink connection if you will even if you won't uh, in the wild so I have the end that we made I put a waterproof coupler on it and we're going to plug it in to the outside there's the, oop, there's the connection we made just plug that in until it clicks which would be enough in most cases but I'm a overachiever so I'm going to take the waterproof coupler and I'm just going to screw that on so we have a nice connection. I already have the Starlink on the back ready to go and I'm going to be using my new Starlink flagpole holder that's on the hitch we have on the back. I could also put this on the flagpole mount that I have that goes under the front under the jack but we're going to try this it's a little less intrusive i want to show that with this particular one the harbor freight flagpole fits in no problem clamps down you can extend this jack out enough if you've got three three holes there to put your coupler in you can extend that out enough But the awning comes fully out and will stay out and the windows will open so no concern there at all mounting this on the back and then plugged in on the inside you can see the starlink is starting to look for satellites so that is i'm going to call that a win so all that's left to do is let the the starlink find its satellites it's really a pretty simple process the the scariest part is cutting apart the cable uh, you might want to have an extra Starlink cable on hand they're not that expensive just in case things go horribly awry that's a it's a great way to keep your router inside and yeah it's an easy fix I'll put the uh, the parts that you're gonna need parts that I used uh, in the link below let me know if you have any questions tomorrow we are getting ready to go to the next stop so first we have to put the Starlink away now so as a little added bonus I've never four little added bonus I'm gonna show you how I store and travel with the Starlink first we're going to put it in stow mode so that everything holds up nice and neatly for travel settings stow are you sure okay but there it is so now we'll pull that down i'll go show you what tote it's going to go into i'm using the husky 12 gallon tote perfect size in the bottom i just have the paper that came with the starlight box instructions and the bottom Starlink lays right on top of that. Easy peasy. Cardboard support that came with it. Keep the base off of the Starlink. Cable goes in. Seahawks flag goes on top. 
go hawks. Start of cover. And done. Because now the router lives inside. You are welcome. One final step for the Starlink modification. You're gonna have growling. In the I'm gonna have growling okay. in the background. One final step. <laughs> oh, Jim. Bloopers. Say Starlink again. Starlink again. There you go. <laughs>